Hello, I'm Tristram Hooley. I'm giving a lecture for the Inland Norway University of Applied Sciences, and this is a lecture focusing on narrative theory and life design as part of my Introduction to Career Theory series. Let's start by talking about stories. Stories, as Robert McKay, the screenwriter, says, are the creative conversion of life itself into a more powerful, clearer, more meaningful experience. They're the currency of human contact. And this belief in the power of stories, in the idea that human beings ultimately understand their experience by telling themselves and other people's stories, lies at the heart of narrative career theory. And of course, career itself is a story. The way we tell people about our careers starts with explaining where we come from. And then we perhaps move on to where we want to go, our aspirations, what we're hoping to achieve. And each time we tell this story, we tell it differently. We might tell it to different people. We might tell it at different points in our life. But all the time we are refining and practicing and retelling the story of our life and our career. And the way that we tell it gives us power over what happens next. So if we tell our story well in a job interview, we perhaps get the job. If we reflect on our life and we tell ourselves the story that we'll never allow that to happen to us again, we gain some psychological power. We make a decision about how we want to behave. So the way we tell our story gives us power over what happens next. And Mark Sabikas, who's one of the key theorists of this, says, as clients tell their stories, their lives start to add up. Story by story, they build the architecture of a larger narrative. At the beginning of counselling, many clients are strangers in their own lives. At the end, they're able to use work to become more whole as they infuse their projects with their own purpose and plan. So Vikas's theory, then, is that people can gain more control over their lives and they can do it by becoming better aware of the stories that they're telling and more able to tell those stories. And he accords career guidance a central role in that, in helping people to do that. He uses the term life design as a way to describe this. And life design talks about how we develop the skill to control our narrative. And that can actually allow us to design our lives. We can have the kind of life that we want if we're good at understanding our narrative and telling our stories. We can literally write ourselves into existence. We can create the lives we want through telling the right stories. So Vikas and the other life designers argue that this idea of life design is important because the world has changed. The kind of ways in which people used to manage their careers depended on pre-existing structures, corporate ladders and other kinds of structures that were already there. And those told us how to live our, our careers. But now we have to design our own lives because many of those structures have vanished. And this draws on a, a tradition of postmodern social theory that is sort of epitomized in the work of people like Anthony Giddens. And they say, um, well, Giddens says that we, we, dis, we um, need to uh, create ourself. We, we are living in a reflexive project of the self. We're building ourselves as we're understanding ourselves, very much in line with the life design approach. So Giddens believes that we need this reflexive project of the self because the existing structures are crumbling away. The things that, that used to give life structure, like trade unions, large organizations, and so on. So if we have to get people to tell stories, if stories are so important to people in, the, in this postmodern era, we need techniques. And the, the narrative theorists are very strong on techniques. So let's look at some techniques that we use. So we'll start with a very simple one. The timeline is a, is a way to get people to tell stories. So we just draw a line on a piece of paper and we say, well, when were we born? And we're now sitting in the room. So what are some of the key things that happened in between that? Mark on important events when they happened. That is building a narrative. We're deciding what's important uh, and 
what's not important. We might illustrate that story to make it more engaging, perhaps when, say, when we first had a child or left university or whatever it might be that's important events for us. We also might emphasize to our clients that their lines may not be straight. Um, Savikas and so, so on are, are very keen on the idea that people's lines may not be straight. We're not necessarily going through traditional careers, the career ladder. We're making up our careers as we go along. We're going to have weekly lines. So these techniques then give us a way of getting people to tell that story. And what we need to then help them to recognize is that this timeline is a narrative that they're creating. It's a way of telling their story. They're deciding what to highlight. They're deciding what to miss out. They're deciding how to structure and present it. And this is all about imposing a meaning on complexity. So a narrative is very much like a theory in that it simplifies what's complex and seeks to explain it and make sense of it. And we then get other techniques. So Savikas himself has a series of questions that he asks in career interviews, which talk about things like who are your role models? What's your favorite magazine? What's your favorite book? What's your motto? What's the first things you remember? And so on. And these things he has particular interpretations that he puts onto each of these uh, issues, but I think more importantly than that, they're a way to elicit a story from people. If you approach people and you say, what's your story? Many people won't know. They won't know. They won't be able to tell their whole life. But by giving them hooks on which to hang parts of their story, you can start to get their story to come out and you can start to recognize patterns and so on. Bill Law uses another approach, uh, which he calls three scene storyboarding, which focuses on uh, helping people to tell the stories of key moments in their life. And Law's very um, interested in what's of a key narrative idea, which is the idea of the turning point. When did things change? When could things have gone differently? And what did you do? So Law says, Let's start with an opening scene. How were things before this thing happened? Let's think about the big thing. When did things in your life change? And then what? how are things different now? And by doing that, by looking at these three scenes, you start to be able to tell your story and you also start to be able to look at how you were able to influence things during that key moment when things change. You start to see yourself as an active participant in the story, someone with agency rather than a passive uh, participant for whom things simply happen. So Ikus then says, well, we need tools for interpreting stories. That's one of the key roles of the counsellor or the career guidance professional. We need to identify what kind of stories people are telling us. Are they telling us the same stories? Are they telling us things that they've never told anyone before? Are they connecting with this story? Uh, or are they just telling it in a dispassionate way? So we try and analyze the stories that people are telling us. We try and spot where some of the patterns are, where some of the problems are, and we try to help them to see it. And by doing that, we help them to see their lives more clearly. So narrative career theories are very powerful and they can quite easily be um, turned into career guidance techniques. And those three approaches that I've just shown you give you different ways of doing that. But there are also some important criticisms of narrative theories. So one of them is that narrative theories really put the responsibility onto the individual. You own your narrative. You have to make the best of the situation that you're in. So the danger is that if you don't do that, you are to blame. You, you, you have failed. You've not controlled your narrative. Um, and it may be that in some circumstances, there are things that go wrong in your life that are not really solvable just by telling a better story. I think it also ignores some wider social, political, and economic narratives. For example, racism. Racism is a kind of story. It's a kind of narrative that many people buy into, that some people are better than other people. But it's not a narrative that you can control individually by telling your story differently. Yes, you can learn to accept it or manage it better, but actually, if you're going to really address the problems that that you're experiencing caused by racism, you need to do something more than simply retell your story. 
And finally, I think this bigger narrative about the loss of social structures, like corporate career ladders and that sort of thing, is very contestable. Some people would argue that, yes, society has changed over, say, the last hundred years, but there's an awful lot in common. There are still many structures. Some of those structures are, are different, but they haven't disappeared altogether. And we can get into more debates about that, and you end up uh, discussing things like, um, you know, is Uber, which doesn't employ anybody, is that still a structure? Is that still an organizational structure? And I, I would say, yes, it is. And I think what um, Giddings, as a postmodern social theorist who influences lo lots of these sorts of things, and the other social theorists of a similar era, and as well as the narrative career counseling theorists themselves, ignore, is they create a very simplistic version where we had structure and now it's lost, rather than we had some structures, but those structures have changed, new structures have come in their place. So here are some references to help you engage with this, some from Savika, some Law who I've mentioned, but also some other um, narrative theorists. There are many, many theorists out there working with narrative and they're using it in different kinds of ways. So in summary, I think narrative theories emphasize the control that individuals have about how they think about and act on their careers. They help people to develop techniques to take control of their lives through narrative. And there are lots of ways that these can be used by career guidance professionals. There are also concerns that this approach responsibilizes individuals and ignores context. More information about me, and thank you for listening.